All right, so let's continue on. We're gonna do a lecture today on ratios and proportions. Uh, so ratios should probably be pretty familiar. They, they kind of pop up everywhere in, in the real world. We see them often enough, um, but those should be familiar. Proportions uh, will be a little bit more algebraically intensive and we'll go ahead and, and get into those after we talk a little bit about ratios. So starting off uh, with the definition of a ratio, so a ratio is just a comparison of two quantities. That, that's really all it is. And most of the time we use, we actually use division um, in this as well. Um, you see this a lot in recipes, um, you know, one, one part uh, salt, two parts pepper, you know, and, and that gives you kind of a ratio of how much you're using between each of them. Um, we, see it, we see it in a lot of places. Um, but the, the notation that we'll use for this ratio Let's say that I have two things, whatever they are, whatever quantities they are, I'm gonna call them A and B, okay? So those are my two things that I'm considering. If I say the ratio of A to B, I write that in one of two ways. I write it in a ratio format, A with a, with a colon B. So we will use that colon symbol, A to B. The other way you can write it is just like you would write a fraction. A over B, we'll say A to B, A over B. And that's, that's again why this sort of, why I mentioned that division will come into play. We'll see why we tend to use this fraction format a bit more often than this colon format um, in, in, the, in an example that we'll do. But these are two different ways that you can write ratios. Notice there is a difference between A to B and B to A or A over B and B over A. These are very different things. So the, the order of that ratio is important. If I said the ratio of B to A, that would be, that would mean I would wanna write one of these guys down here. If I said A to B, I wanna write one of these guys up here. So let's go ahead and just look at a quick example. Let's say that I own six cats and I own four dogs. And I want you to find the ratio of cats to dogs that I own. So again, I'm saying ratio of cats to dogs. So I wanna make sure that I deal with cats first. So what we can do here is I could label my cats as A and my dogs as B. And so I wanna find the ratio of A to B right there. So if we do this, we could write six to four and we'd pretty much be done. There's not really much more we can do there. but. This is an example, this is a perfect example of why I actually like to write this as a fraction instead. So rather than writing it as six to four, not that it's wrong, but rather than writing it that way, I'm gonna write it as six over four instead. And here's where we let our algebra skills come into play. At this point here, I can recognize that this can simplify down to three over two, right? And so um, in that scenario there, that's why we like to use the fractions because we can simplify it down to something much simpler. You know, if I told you that I had 60 cats and 40 dogs, well, if you're trying to figure out how many, you know, exactly how many cats and dogs I have in sort of comparison to each other, relative to each other, it's a lot easier to just say, hey, for every three cats, I have two dogs, um, rather than saying for every 60 cats, I have 40 dogs. This is a much simpler way of, of answering that, of describing to someone how many cats you have relative to how many dogs you have. Um, you also could write your answer as three to two. That's perfectly acceptable. Um, but you can probably clearly see why, why we like to do this um, fraction uh, method, this fraction format, I should say, because it, it allows us to, to do some algebra on it. Um, something that, that you generally want to be uh, careful of is actually units here. Um, if it's obvious in the problem, you don't, you don't really have to, but a lot of people will actually, would actually rather write their answers as three cats to two dogs, or write their answer as three cats with that colon, two dogs. Um, if it's clear in the problem, like in this problem statement, it, it, we're only dealing with cats and dogs. We're not dealing with cats, dogs, and birds, um, you know, and so it's pretty, it's pretty obvious which we, which we care about, which, you know, what we're talking about here. So we really don't need to write those units, but maybe if I said that I also owned a couple birds and then I said, hey, find the ratio of cats to dogs, it might be help, helpful to write 
those actual words, cats and dogs, just so we can really explicitly see that. Um, so not super necessary, but can be helpful there. Let's do another example. Um, and it looks almost exactly the same. The only difference is that I'm now looking at dogs to cats. And so the difference here is instead of doing six to four, we're gonna write four to six. Now again, maybe not, maybe not write it that way. Let's, let's write it as four over six because we can simplify that to two over three. And we could box that as our answer. Alternatively, you could write two to three. That'd be a perfectly acceptable answer. And if you wanted to get really uh, sort of nitpicky with it, you could write two dogs to three cats. Or you could write two dogs, that colon, three cats right there. Either of those would be acceptable as well. All right. And so just to, just to reiterate again, what we're actually dealing with in this proportion is we're talking about um, the, the, the ratio of these two things. I mean, I use the word ratio sort of twice there, but, you know, uh, but really it, it, it's just like you've heard the word ratio in real life. It's just letting you know how many, in this, using this example, how many dogs you have for, for every cat that you have. Um, and so it kind of gives you a sense of, oh, do I have more dogs or do I have more cats, right? So let's let's go on with with uh, with another example here, and this one we want to be very careful uh, with. So I'm going to say 40 ounces to two pounds, and I want to find that ratio. A lot of people will just say, okay, 40 to two, and they'll box their answer and they'll be done with it. But the problem is, is that we actually have units here that we can actually convert. Um, so that they are, so that they're, they're the same. Um, when I was dealing with cats and dogs, you know, obviously there's no actual conversion between cats and dogs. There's no way to, to turn a cat into a dog or vice versa, but we can turn ounces into pounds or we can turn pounds into ounces. So what I'm going to recognize here is that this two pounds is equal to 32 ounces, right? Every pound is 16 ounces. So now my ratio is going to be 40 over 32. And I'm actually even, I, this is a case where I, I do actually want to be careful about my units here. I don't want people to be thinking that I'm talking about pounds. Um, so so I, I am actually going to write down the ounces right there. We can simplify this. 40 over 32 simplifies down to 5 over 4. And let's keep the ounces there. And then we're we're on our way, and that and that would be that would be a, a perfectly acceptable answer there. Five ounces to four ounces. That's that ratio. Um, now now you might ask yourself, well, what if I instead converted the forty ounces to pounds? Well, that's that's totally fine. You could do that as well. Um, sort of count this up. Every sixteen ounces is a pound. So if I'm at if I'm at 16 plus another 16 plus eight, that's gonna give me 40, right? That's gonna give me my 40 ounces. And so what this tells me that in pounds, I have one pound, a second pound, and then I have a half of a pound that with those leftover eight ounces. So I have two and a half pounds here. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's, let's write the ratio as 2.5 pounds to two pounds. And I'm actually gonna simplify this kind of up, if you will. I'm gonna multiply this by two over two so that I have five pounds over four pounds. And again, you see that same five over four that we saw before uh, with the ounces. So the question is, well, do I even need to write the, the units there? And the answer is no, because in, in, in either case, it doesn't matter if I'm talking about ounces or pounds or tons or grams or, um, or kilograms or whatever I'm talking about. It doesn't actually matter. It's all because it's all just weight and it's all the same thing. 
Um, I really, I just, I, I'm always just talking about the same ratio of five to four. So, so it, it would totally work out for us to just write five over four, or you could write five to four. And those would be perfectly acceptable answers. Either way, right there. Great. So, uh, so there we go. There's an example with actual units in there. Let's go ahead and move on to uh, proportions. So, proportions will will deal with ratios. They're going to have ratios in them, and a proportion is an equation. So, it actually is an equation that we're going to actually solve. And when you set it up, it's just it's just that equation where you have two ratios, and you're telling me that they're equal. So. First things first, let's go ahead and look at like 8 to 14. So the ratio of 8 to 14. You could simplify that, right? You could, you could take this 8 over 14, and you could simplify that down to 4 over 7. And I'm, and I'm giving us that information here. I'm saying, hey, look, these are equal. So if you wanted to, you could just write out, hey, these are equal. And obviously, with the fraction format of writing this, it's pretty obvious, right? I mean, we've been, we've dealt with fractions uh, before, and we know that 8 over 14 can be simplified to 4 over 7. So writing it as an equal sign, that should be, that should be pretty clear. Um, but that's, this is exactly what a proportion is. I mean, you've dealt with proportions before. So we're going to deal with proportions in a bit. I'll, I'll do an example at the end, where instead of like a 4 here, for example, I'm going to replace it with an X. And then we're gonna have to, you're gonna have to tell me what that X actually is. Um, and so that'll that'll be a little bit more complicated. But we'll get into that in a second. Let's let me first talk about this idea of cross products right here. So I'll go ahead and write that out. Cross products. So this is a fact. You can use this on your homework, on uh, on worksheets, on exams, on, on anything. This is just a fact. If I have two ratios that form a proportion, they're, that they're equal, if I take the cross product of the numerators and the denominators, um, and I check that those are equal, that means that those ratios are equal. And I know that was kind of a mouthful, so let me just show an example here. Um, if I start off, let's say I have A over B, and I have C over D. And I'm wondering if these are equal. I don't, I'm not sure if they are or not. What I can do is I can take the cross product right here. And what I'm doing there is I'm, is I'm then having A times D equals maybe B times C. And the point of the point that I'm making here is that if this is correct, if this is true, if they're equal, then this was a was in fact a proportion and it these were the same thing so so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do an example here uh two examples actually so if you look at one half and eight over 16 you can probably tell right off the top of your head that those are the same because eight over 16 is is just one half if you simplify it down but if we want to check this we could just do a cross product. And so I have 1 times 16 and 2 times 8. And oh, look, I get 16 and 16. Those are the same. Yay, we're happy. So this 1 half is in fact equal to 8 over 16. And now if we look at this 7 over 3 uh, equaling 28 over 12, um, and we want to check if those are the same or not, then we're going to again just do our cross product. So we'll have 7 times 12, and that's going to equal 84. And then we'll have 3 times 28 and that's also going to equal 84. So yay, again, they're, they're equal. The 84s are the same. So we know, in fact, that 7 thirds is equal to 28 over 12. Now, let's say I gave us another example, though, and we weren't really sure whether or not they were the same. I think those last two examples were, were kind of, uh, they were a little bit more obvious that they were, that they were equal. But when I look here at, at 6 fourths and 39 over 26, I, those aren't immediately obvious to me that they're equal. Um, and, and so, so really, the, you know, I mean, who's even to say if they are? Um, so let's go ahead and, and check 
whether or not they're equal. Um, and, and I'll kind of show why, you know, this is, this is good to actually do this. So we do our cross product and I'm going to have six times 26, maybe equaling four times 39. And when I do this, I get 156 and 156 here. And so in fact, these are actually equal. We can, we can hide our, can hide our, our question marks there. We we know we know that these are equal. So six fourths is in fact equal to thirty nine over twenty six. That might be a little better example of when they're actually equal to each other, um, but they don't look like it. So let's do one more example here. I actually want to do this where we actually have to solve for x. So I'm going to give us a proportion here. It's going to be x over two, or sorry, x plus two over five equals three over eight. And what I'm at, what I would ask you to do here is to actually solve for X. So actually tell me what X makes this proportion equal. And so again, I'm gonna do a cross product. So let's go ahead and, and do this. X plus two over five equals three over eight. Ooh, let's use a different color there. So I do my cross product. And when I do that, I do have to be careful. I have eight times X plus two. I wanna put parentheses around that X plus two so that, I, so that I distribute appropriately. Let's distribute eight times X plus two is eight X plus 16. Five times three is 15. I'm gonna subtract 16 from both sides. So I'm gonna get eight X equals negative one. And I'm gonna divide both sides by eight to get negative one eighth. And while not necessarily the nicest answer, at least it's not like a whole number or anything, it is an answer and it is a perfectly acceptable answer. Uh, so there's an example of you know, what you might have to do where you have to actually solve for X and figure it out. Cross multiplying will be the way to go. Um, so yeah, I'll go ahead and leave that uh, as ratios and proportions um, and we'll call that the end of the lecture.